pyramid brings AI into BI in two different ways. The first is where AI is used inside the product to do BI, which means there are tools, heuristics, and machine learning algorithms in the product that help users build business intelligence artifacts, reporting, and analytics. The second is where the BI tools allow customers to run their own AI algorithms in R, Python, and SAS to embellish and fix their data, predominantly in the data modeling or in the discovery tools to produce more interesting insights and analytics. Now let's take a quick look at some of this in action. The first example is to look at the process of building a model. If you look at this spreadsheet, you can see it's made up of a number of sheets and on each one there's a set of data. If I was to take this spreadsheet and import it with the data modeling tool, I can literally just drag and drop onto the screen, drop it in, and build myself a model. And at the same time, I'm going to choose Smart Discovery Engine as well. This process effectively will understand the structure of the spreadsheet, automatically work out what the tables, measures, dimensions, and hierarchies are, build me a model automatically. At the same time, the smart discovery process you can see listed here will run in the background and automatically analyze the database and build me a dashboard of all the analyses that are most interesting to look at. So here we go. We're into the discovery tool in Pyramid using that spreadsheet. And without having done any clicking or any programming, I'm able to start analyzing the database um, that was expressed through that spreadsheet on the fly. And that's a great example of both the heuristic magic that we have in the product, um, as well as uh, the machine learning capabilities of Pyramid when it comes to helping users make things easier to do than otherwise. We can see here from the spooler now that our smart discovery process is complete. And if I was to go ahead and click on the resulting dashboard that is produced by the smart discovery, you can see how the AI engine has automatically worked out what analyses and which measures and which hierarchies are most interesting to look at using a barrage of different machine learning functions from neural net, decision trees, rainforest algorithms, and correlations um, to best show me as an analyst and a user uh, what is interesting in the data. You can also see that it is automatically chosen which visuals best suit the kinds of data we're looking at. And it's not a bad start when you consider that this was run with a single click of a button and a raw spreadsheet in producing this particular output. In another example of how Pyramid has baked in AI into the product to make it easier for users to use BI, we can look at something like forecasting. If I go ahead and throw months onto the uh, categories of my chart and look at something like uh, sales and compare it to something like, say, returns, I can come to the query here and click forecast. When I click forecast, the engine appends to my data set seven periods of forecasting using a best fit analysis. What it has done effectively is gone through all of these different algorithms for forecasting data and chosen the one that has a best fit based on statistical R squared for the data set. What's great is that I didn't need to know how to do that. I was able to do it simply by um, drag and drop. And you can see it doesn't matter how much I change the data here. At each and every turn, the engine will run and the engine will come up with the best forecast that suits each particular data set so you get the most effective forecast. Another good example of AI in the product relates to content management. One of the biggest problems in a big content store is finding all the relevant things that I'm interested in based on what other people have used inside the system. This is like the product recommendation engine in sites like Amazon. Here you can see in a separate instance of Pyramid that I'm using, a whole bunch of content that has been created by many users from different roles in different places and shared in the public space, in the workgroup space, and in my own space. What I can do is I can look at things that have been recommended. These have been recommended by users specifically. So this one has got a five-star rating, and this one has got a three-star rating, and so on and so forth. However, there's an auto-recommendation engine that is using an algorithm known as matrix factorization, which is the same engine used by companies like Amazon to recommend a product based on your history of searches on their site. And here we're recommending all the reports to you 
that you may be interested in based on other people's usage of those reports where they have some kind of crossover with your interests in reports as well. The next thing to take a look at is some of the heuristics available to users in the data modeling process. For that, we're going to look at an advanced data flow. And we're going to start by bringing in a database here from Postgres. And the first thing to notice is that, for example, from a table like this, if I was to go ahead and do something like time intelligence, using time intelligence wizard, and connect it up, it automatically understands which column to use for driving um, the time intelligence, and that's obviously looking at the right field. You can also see that the date field here has got no time markings on it, so the time intelligence doesn't attempt to break out hours and minutes. In other words, there's a heuristic there to best show you um, the information that you need. The next thing to show you as part of the heuristic magic is to look in the data modeling phase. And you can see in the data modeling phase, it automatically wires up all the tables for you uh, with the right joins and the right keys. If I turn the heuristic off, you would simply be given a list of tables like that, and it would be up to you, the end user, to work out which fields go with which fields. Now, admittedly, when you read from some kinds of database technologies, the schema is set for you by the database, but in the world of data mashups and different data from different data sources, having that kind of schema available from the data source is highly unlikely. So the need for a heuristic is really important. If I go ahead and remove that join and instead choose the primary key, you can see it automatically understands how to wire up the database for me. And by and large, it does a very good job of, um, of working out what should go with what, down to the join type, the keys, and in some cases, in the bi-directional switch. Other examples here of clever things where we know which columns to show and which columns to turn into measures for you. Um, in many cases, Primary keys are turned off because, generally speaking, you don't care to analyze them as a user. Other good examples include the automation and creation of hierarchies based on the structure of the data. You can see that it understood how to take our time dimension and build a hierarchy for me. In this case, two hierarchies going to year, quarter, month, and the other one going to year, week, and day. And this concludes the side of the product that helps users use BI. The other side of the product that is relevant is where we facilitate the user's ability to use AI logic themselves in their own data. To demonstrate this, I'm going to start again from our database and start by pulling in some of the machine learning point-and-click tools that we offer in the data modeling. You can see here we've got libraries from Weka, Mlib, um, SVM, uh, TensorFlow, and a bunch of other algorithms built by Pyramid. In this case, if I wanted to use the Weka library for a k-means cluster, I just drag it onto the canvas, put it into the flow. Um, you can see that it automatically pulled out all the columns that would only work in a k-means clustering algorithm, which are numeric. And from here, um, in this uh, curated interface, it allows me to attach a k-means cluster to my data set as I process it for analysis further downstream. Another example where we facilitate the use of machine learning, AI, and scripting in the product is by being able to drop in an algorithm written in something like R or Python and soon to be SAS. So for example, here I can pull down uh, an R box. I can type in a script myself if I know how to write it. Um, I can even pull something in from our marketplace, which is a collection of scripts that Pyramid supplies to the market for easy usage of the product. So for example, there's an outlier algorithm that we've pulled down that is written in R, which is not the most complicated, if you know how to write R. And I just need to pick the column I want to apply to. I'm going to do it based on, say, quantity. Um, another example where this is clever is being able to chain in not just a script from the marketplace or a custom script that, that I wrote, but also a script that someone else has written. This is where the shareable business logic features from Pyramid come in. So for example, if I came to folders and went to company scripts, you can see that I've got some here called outlier logic that someone else has posted in the system, and then I can use here again. 
the fact that I can use scripts myself or scripts that other people have created in the system and blend them into the same processing flow for data modeling is an enormous step towards making machine learning a productionized part of the BI workflow and allows data scientists to create logic in one process and share it with end users who are not experts on the scripting process itself but understand the output in another. And that completely changes the nature of how machine learning and AI can be brought to fruition in companies today. We'll go ahead now and process our, our in-memory in engine example. And we'll see that all of this come to fruition. So let's go ahead and hit the run button, process the model, give it a quick name, and off it goes processing. And in that click, I'm sucking in the database, running it through the algorithms, and I'm suddenly introduced to the discovery tool ready for me to analyze that database. Okay, I'm going to take the product dimension, so into a scatter plot, compare it, say, between cost data and, let's say, uh, net profit. And if I go to the data table, you can see here I've got a k-means cluster, which is generated by that record tool. And it's, it's broken out for me very conveniently, um, all the different clusters in the system, um, so that I can understand my data better. And that was done through predominantly a point-and-click process. Now you can imagine doing the same activity using neural nets, decision trees, or any other kind of classic machine learning algorithm, including your own custom logic, uh, in the same fashion. And because it's done as part of the data modeling, uh, rather than part of discovery, you're able to build incredibly sophisticated logic and have it run well before you attempt to visualize it inside the discovery tools. And that concludes our demonstration.